Hello and welcome to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel and in today's episode we're going to Australia for the Ford Telstar. Hello, welcome back and if you're new to Quartzlight, we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that as well. So if you're interested in cars, car brochures, looking back at car memories, then please do consider subscribing. It is all completely free. Now this particular episode was first aired on a Friday. We call those episodes Ford Friday episodes because we look at a Ford each week. Today is no exception. We're going to Australia. Have a look at this car the Ford Telstar. Indeed, most Europeans have probably not even heard of this car and I know very little about it, but I do know we've got a big Australian audience which I'm sure will help us out and point us in the right direction. The kind of like funny thing is, we call this Ford Friday, but in Australia, first time you probably see these is on a Saturday, so welcome to those having a great weekend, and I, well, I'm hoping at least. But anyway, I'm trying not to waffle, let's go straight into the brochure and uh, have a look at it on the board and we'll learn a bit more about this interesting car. Okay, so here it is, today's brochure. Yes, an Australian car, yes. I live in Canada, yes. I'm originally from the UK, so you know, we get around the world on this program, if nothing else. And actually talking about that, the strangest comment I ever got from an Australian viewer was, why is a POM? talking about brochures and our cars which was, I was like, oh, I'm sorry I like cars that's all and I always like learning about cars from around the world particularly cars we're not all that familiar of with but the Telstar um, was launched in Australia in 1983 basically to replace the Ford Cortina so obviously when the Cortina left there was a big gap for that similar size car so in effect you could say this was the Australian Ford Sierra yeah we got the Ford Sierra in Europe to replace our Cortina a lot more convent uh, unconventional though we went from a very square Cortina to a very a curvy Sierra which was certainly very controversial and in particular it was only launched as a hatchback so that was a hard pill to sp swallow initially at least but certainly became a very popular and sold millions now this when i look at the ford telstar I, I think well it isn't quite as radical a move from the cortina because it's still kind of like square lines isn't it so and it is as you'll see in this brochure shown here as a saloon car so not too radical in that way I guess the more radical thing was, in some ways for Ford, is this shares the platform with the Mazda 626. Now, I'm not sure what the whole politics around this were, why they didn't just bring the Sierra to Australia like they did with the Cortina, I'm really not sure. And You know, with the Cortina, the Australia made the most of it by point huge big weird and wonderful engines in there made it an extremely interesting car not the same story here this is being shown with a two liter engine now i've always been under understanding that the australians particularly in the 70s loved their big six cylinder engines now we're getting this two liter what the thoughts were around this time dropping the Cortina and having a two litre so I guess in effect yeah it's not controversial as in it suddenly went to this jelly mould shape that was only a hatchback maybe more controversial that it was shared a, a shared platform with a Mazda 626 and it wasn't getting these weird and wonderful six cylinder engines if anyone remembers that time in Australia, please do chat in the comments. I would love to know how this car was viewed when it first came out. So obviously this is the first generation car. This particular brochure is from 1985. And as you can see, and as I'll zoom in, it certainly seems well regarded in terms of 
The Motoring Press here. This is Wheels Magazine, Car of the Year Award, an Australian magazine, um, for outstanding achievement in automotive design. So there we go. So the Automotive Press certainly seems to be happy with this new car. It says form, function, efficiency, Ford Telsar. Um, and the Ford badge of course and if we just flip to the back page that's our printed date for this brochure so July 1985 and then when we look at it from this angle you know confirmation this is just a traditional four-door salute like I said they were a, a hatchback it doesn't show the hatchback in this brochure for whatever reason that probably came in another brochure I would imagine Although sadly I don't have that. Um, they would have been the TX5, the hatchback version. And you can see even more Mazda 626 clues on the hatchback version with sort of like a different front end, basically. Um, I'm sure it was a pretty reliable car, though, and I guess that's the bonus of the sharing a lot with Mazda, because reliability is key. Like I say, unusual that they're only using like a two liter engine though, I, I kind of like feel, but again, when you're sharing a platform, I'm sure there are some restrictions there. And of course, it's, you know, right up to 85 here, and certainly it's a different world than it was in the 70s in relation to oil prices. So maybe everyone was a little bit more fuel economy conscious when we got to this time because certainly when we can see on here it says an efficient combination of today's brightest driving ideas so yeah we'll move down to the text in a moment to learn a bit more about it front wheel drive now where you know the core team was rear wheel drive the sierra remember we stuck with rear wheel drive because ford for europe was a bit scared to move it to front wheel drive so the fear is not here it would suggest Another interesting point I should point out, uh, thinking about this as being an Australian brochure, I'm sat here in Canada talking about this brochure, originally came from uh, the UK, picked this particular brochure up, not in Australia, picked this up in the US, so <laughs> even the brochure itself seems to have travelled a little bit around the world for whatever reason, which it seems very strange. Anyway, let's pick up the key points here on the text at the bottom. It tells us, and apologies for the reflections, unfortunately black card always seems to do that. Front wheel drive technology has played a major part in the quest for more efficient small and medium sized cars. In the 2 litre Telstar, it helps provide superb combination of performance, handling, economy and interior space. The interior is big enough to seat five people in relaxed comfort, with enough luggage space to carry a substantial load. And Telstar has the versatility to carry an even bigger load when necessary. Telstar offers all this in a shape that points to the future. And then we open the brochure up and it seems to get larger and larger. The centre here, there is another little bit of a card to turn over here. And underneath here is like the full sort of like see-through x-ray type image there but quite nice to keep it on that flap to show you that transition and over here it's showing a red example talking about the engine so we'll start over here then we'll move our way back through the brochure so main image I've zoomed into this red example is a GL version I actually quite like the front end actually I don't know if that was controversial or not but I certainly quite like this little bit of a lip like i say it reminds me a bit what the sierra was doing by dropping that bonnet line up although actually when it got to the second generation it went for more sort of a more conventional front end actually um, lower down it tells us the stylish wedge shaped body helps give telstar excellent aerodynamic qualities so it's definitely certainly a move to aussie cars becoming you know People wanting a more aerodynamic, fuel-efficient vehicle, I think. It tells that advanced 2-litre performance to drive Telstar is to experience advanced technology with its cross-floor aluminium alloy head, an overhead camshaft, multi-spherical combustion chambers and high-energy transistorized ignition system. Telstar 2-litre engine is powerful and efficient. 
lightweight, high strength materials are used efficiently in this engine, helping to give Telstar an excellent power to weight ratio. That's good for performance and it's good for fuel economy as well. Telstar economy. Telstar's efficient engine design is just one factor contributing to its excellent fuel economy. Its front wheel drive allows a substantial reduction in weight when compared with conventional rear wheel drive designs. This combined with Telstar's aerodynamic wedge shaped body, carefully selected gear ratios and the engine's twin Venturi downdraft carburetor gives Telstar the kind of economy so necessary in today's motoring environment. And then we get a little bit of a drawing there of um, the engine and sort of like an exploded shot of the clutch and gears by the looks of it. And then when we open this brochure still further we get the full look of this little bit of a see-through image let's just zoom in on that a little bit quite a pleasant little drawing actually the engine compartment down through into the seats back through to um, the rear suspension and brakes at the back there and that spur wheel it starts by telling us fully independent suspension for excellent ride and handling characteristics Telstar gives you four wheel fully independent suspension with front and rear anti-sway bars. Front wheel drive negative offset steering geometry equal length drive shaft and self stabilizing rear suspension geometry further enhance Telstar's handling precision. Responsive rack and pinion steering is standard equipment on all Telstars. If you desire power steering, is it is available at extra cost on some models. It then goes on to tell us functional ideas for driving confidence. You need more than a good steering and suspension system for driving confidence. You also need dependable tyres and brakes. Telstar steel belt radial tyres. It has power assisted front disc brakes and self adjusting rear drum brakes operated on a dual circuit system. A load sensitive valve works to reduce the possibility of rear wheel lockup under harsh braking. Telstar's low bonnet line, slim pillars and high intensity quartz halogen headlights gives you excellent visibility day and night. Driving controls are well located and can be operated with a minimum of fuss. And the instrument panel in every model is carefully laid out to provide information instantly. Driver comfort is also a major part of road safety. That's why Telstar has many noise and vibration reduction features, including a special subframe to isolate the engine from the body. The engine is mounted to the subframe on two rubber bushings and an hydraulic damper. The subframe is, in turn, isolated from the car's body by four tuned rubber bushings. This system provides a substantial reduction in engine noise and vibration levels in the cabin and a quiet, relaxing ride is a major factor in driver comfort. Formed for spaciousness and comfort, Telstar is big enough to take comfortably you, four passengers and the luggage. Features common to all models include a height adjustable steering column, a remote release fuel filler, lid, an intermittent windscreen wiper setting, heated rear windows, right hand side remote control rear view mirror and warning lamps to keep you in touch with the car's key functions. The seats are well padded and contoured. Depending on your choice of model, the driver's seat has up to nine different adjustments, including lumbar support, headrest height and seat cushion tilt. Every Telstar model is well appointed for driver and passenger comfort. And then looking uh, at the back there and the boot or trunk, whichever you prefer, of the Telstar, a couple of little key points. Two litre badge on that front wing and those unusual wheels. And those big rear lamps, quite like the smoked as well, that's quite nice. Should point out that boot design. Pretty low lip, that's always handy to get things in and out, but them shorts are extreme short shorts, aren't they? Very, very 80s. 
and then a glimpse onto the interior I'm presuming this is the GL as well it's not actually telling me but typical sort of Ford Australia features like these seem very familiar these sort of uh, armrests there and they do look like very comfortable seats looks like on this one like I said I don't know if it's the GL but I'm presuming it's the same one as that's what's been features we get these rather nice uh, fold down rear seats which is always handy in a saloon it tells us an efficient versatile boot open Telstar boot and you'll find ample room for a big load and you can extend the load space to accommodate long awkward objects with Telstar's divided fold down rear seat backrests one part of which is wider than the other this means you can carry long objects and still seat one or two passengers in the rear or you can fold down both parts for even greater load space what's more the boot opening has been specially designed to allow easy access for loading and unloading and as we turn the page it's nice to see that they're using the gear badge the telstar gear luxury combined with function so gear the car you always aspired to to own and again similar sort of idea the luxury version as we zoom into this main image of this white Telstar gear we can see you know the two litre badge of the gear badge on there as well that unusual wheel design and we was going for a little bit of a red insert on the bumpers and rubbing strips were possibly more common in Europe for the gear models we would have gone for a bright insert and then a little bit of a look at the rear and that gear badge design and it says gear is the name Ford reserves for some of the most elegant most luxuriously equipped models and Telstar gear lives up to that fine tradition unusual little bit of a dash layout an unusual steering wheel as well with that brown in the middle it's like we've got a brown steering wheel a little bit unusual then we've got this interior which is certainly very unfamiliar unfamiliar to Ford fans in Europe Those very unusual seats oh what we've got on the back seat a little bit of a camcorder type thing that certainly dates it probably your cell phone has probably got more power and takes pictures better pictures today but interesting to see head restraints all round very much head restraints were a big thing in australia for a long time though so we get plush velour cloth seat facings as we've seen and cut pile carpets um, all part of the gear interior luxury and it starts talking about the seats adjustment being many ways again it goes on to tell us am fm stereo radio cassette system with four speakers is standard equipment telstar gear also has center front motorized air vents that's a little bit unusual they work on a similar principle to an oscillating fan to direct air at and around you and not just in one preset direction further telstar gear refinements include subtle tinted side and rear glass right and left hand side remote control exterior rear view mirrors and remote boot lid release the driver's side door lock cylinder and the ignition key slot have lights that illuminate when the door handle is operated five speed manual transmission is standard comprehensive instrumentation includes a tachometer there are 12 key function warning lamps including low fuel low washer fluid level low oil pressure low brake fluid rear window heater on and stop and tail lights out in addition there are reminder chimes for headlights on doors ajar ignition key left in and engine warning lamp on stylish alloy road wheels and tasteful exterior trim add to the telstar gears distinctive good looks if it's luxury you desire in a medium-sized car gear is the telstar for you so them unusual wheels are in fact unusual styled alloy wheels they're certainly a little bit different and nice that it's throwing alloy wheels and these fancy wheels are standard on this gear model turn the page it starts introducing the gl i think there was an s model as well but i don't know why it's not really showing that here but um quite a nice little example the gl so the lower spec model 
I actually quite like it in yellow in this lower spec actually it tells us a great example of style and efficiency shows the interior and again I think I actually prefer this model overall towards the gear but obviously that's just my taste um, let's have a look how it uh, describes it so it tells us with the ruminous and versatility the Telstar GL in is, is an immensely practical car but with so many features and so much style it offers you more than mere practicality there is a remote release for the fuel filler lid and remote control driver's side exterior rear view mirror Telstar GL has a soft feel steering wheel mounted on a height adjustable steering column it's well padded contoured seat with cloth facings the driver's seat has six adjustments etc etc as in all Telstars the instrument panel is carefully laid out to provide information at a glance from its gauges and eight key function warning lights looks like we also get a digital clock two speaker AM FM radio tinted band laminated windscreen is standard with so much to offer Telstar GL represents excellent value for money I actually think the GL version is pretty well spec anyway I'm not sure you really need to go higher than that unless of course you were attracted by that lovely gear badge and then at the back we rather nicely get a rear of the Telstar so we can have a look at that styling and those lights and yes I quite like the rear lights actually of the Telstar I love that sort of smoked look um, this is the gear example again if you're wondering and then moving down and then on the back page all these sorts of like small print you know we have the right to change um, specifications and models at any time sort of thing and then it comes down to the Ford Motor Company of Australia Limited incorporated in Victoria Ford Sales Company of Australia Limited incorporated in Victoria registered offices 1735 Sydney Road Campbellfield Victoria 3061 printed July 1985 and then below that we get the Ford Telstar and that Ford badge again and then if we just swivel around we get this rather nice little, nice little badge little triangle with the Australian flag and Ford Australia we're moving with you so there we go the Ford Telstar if you've got any memories of these please jot it in the comments always interesting to read and learn a bit more about cars that we're not as familiar with in Europe but thank you so much for watching today um, many more episodes of Quarterlight coming in the near future and as always please do consider liking and subscribing it is all completely free helps the channel grow helps you find the episodes you really want to see approaching up to 500 episodes of quarter light now so thank you so much for watching like i said thank you for liking and thank you for subscribing all those who have already done so i've also added a couple of boxes here that's for other episodes of quarter light that you may want to see and if you do thank you so much but like we always say thank you for watching today please do take care we'll see you very soon and goodbye